Hello, welcome to another episode of Asian Mythology Retold Triggers. Today, we will be discussing Quest Vars. So, what's a Quest Var? Essentially, it is a variable which we define and control. It takes the form of a number, so it could be a whole number, such as 8, 16, 47, or it could be a float number with decimal places, like 3.1415, for example. Unfortunately, in Asian Mythology Retold, we actually can't do that much with quest files, much less that we could actually do in the original game. The reason for this is if we just search for conditions, there's only three conditions with quest files, and if we look for effects, again, there's not really much with quest files, and a couple of these aren't actually even quest vars. So, I've explained what they are, we might as well show a use for them. So, first of all, let's start with setting our quest vars. So, quest var name, we give it a name, so we call it berries for example, and we set an initial value. If we go into another effect without setting it first, it doesn't matter, as every quest var will be created at zero. What we do with this is then we modify this variable depending on what we want. So, for example, I could have a quest var where when Athena goes near to her berries, a quest var goes up and that will count how many unique berry bushes she has visited, especially if we have this as a non-looping, just once only trigger. So if I do berries plus one and copy that over and I just change the condition each time because the effect remains the same, we'll now get our number increasing by one every time she goes near a bush. What can we do with that number? So sometimes it's quite useful to display that number so what I'll just do is I'll have a looping trigger and we'll use the quest var echo in chat. Berries. This just tells us what the quest var is, so you can see in action what this setup is and what I'm actually doing here. So on the side, I haven't created my quest var, but it's at zero as Anthony. all of them are. You'll see there's a decimal there. If I go near a berry bush, it goes up to one. And if I go around all the other berries, you see it increases each time I'm near a berry. Don't know what happened with movement there, but that's what's going to happen. So you could count up the number of checkpoints the player has visited, you could count up the number of things they've interacted with, and then have some effects based on those stats. So, for example, I could say if berries is 2, then we get a message up. And this works regardless of what order you go for the berries in, and that will work now. So I could go up to the north berry and the west berry, or I could do the other two. It wouldn't matter. As long as that number is two, then we get the message. That's what we saw last time when I had it echoing, so that's how you know that the number is what it says it is. So I go to one, nothing happens. I go to another one, and then we get our message. I restart the exact same scenario again, and I go to two completely different berry bushes, and I still get the same output. So that's one of our uses of quest vars. If we're looking for numbers of an objective completed, when it's not the full lot, it just saves you having to do every single permutation for them. There's a couple of other conditions and effects, well, really not that many to go through. Quest file compare just does exactly the same as quest file check, but we're comparing to another quest file rather than a number. Quest variable distance is the same, but we can specify a few numbers either side. With our effects to go through, we've got the quest file set, which I mentioned, quest file modify, we can multiply, we can divide, as well as addition and subtraction for our values, so we can build numbers up, we can have collectibles that increase stats or a quest var as such. 
Modify with variable, again, we're just changing a quest var relative to another quest var rather than a number. We can copy it, so we essentially set quest var 1 to the value of quest var 2. We randomize it, so this is a good way of generating random numbers, percents, chances, etc. We can randomize and get a new result every time. That's just every consecutive time it will still repeat numbers. And that's really about it with quest vars in Asian Mythology Retold. Unfortunately, as you can see, it's not a great deal there that we can actually do with that. We don't have the ability to plug stats in, so we can't have RPG-like systems where you level up and gain experience without using excess code or custom triggers here. The state of custom triggers at the moment is quite difficult because although I could very easily create these custom triggers, there's only a certain number of effects. If you try and add more in, it actually breaks completely, so you have to rewrite some of them, which isn't ideal. So I'll leave you with the random number generator, and until you learn XS, unfortunately there's not really much more you can do with them. You can have code that I'll put in the video description to get rid of the training decimals if you just want the number, but that's all there is in Retold. They're a lot more simple than EE and that's a lot less complex. A bit disappointing, but on that note, let's end and I will see you in the next video.